Our first glimpse of Charles the King. The Constitution decrees that this first full day of his reign is also a moment of personal heartbreak. He spent yesterday at his mother's side as she passed her final moments in peace. Now, alongside his queen consort, he must be ready to assume the heavy responsibilities of the sovereign and what is a day of national mourning. At midday, the bells began to toll at Westminster Abbey. and at York Minster and at St Paul's Cathedral where a service of reflection will take place this evening. In Parliament, MPs rose to observe a minute's silence. A house so often divided now united, as so often the Queen united her kingdom. Tributes were led by the Speaker. Indeed, while this is a time of very considerable sadness, those memories of a noble, gracious lady who devoted her life to her family, the United Kingdom, and those nations around the world whom she served as Queen will bring us some consolation and joy. And then the Prime Minister, appointed by the Queen just days ago, Speaker, who spoke not just of her legacy, but of the new monarch. The British people, the Commonwealth and all of us in this House will support him as he takes our country forward to a new era of hope and progress, our new Carolean age. The Crown endures, our nation endures, and in that spirit I say, God save the King. They were sentiments shared by the leader of His Majesty's opposition. Our Elizabethan age may now be over, but her legacy will live on forever. And as the children of that era, it falls upon us to take that legacy forward, to show the same love of country, the love of one another, as she did, to show empathy and compassion, as she did and to get Britain through this dark night and bring it into the dawn, as she did. Under cool grey skies, the nation had woken to a moment of history not witnessed for seven decades. Those leaving messages of condolence attached to bouquets found perhaps mutual comfort in the growing crowds. Oh, well, it's a moment, isn't it? I mean, we lost really powerful female figure uh, was my first takeaway and just you know she meant so much to so many people so felt like I needed to come down today. How do you describe how you're feeling today? Very sad. It's the end of, a, end of an era really for a lot of people. New generation and new generation have got to get used to this and we've got to get used to King Charles III. Prince Harry was the first member of the royal family to leave Balmoral this morning. His grandmother's body will remain in Scotland, in the country so deep in her affections for the coming days. It feels as though, I think for probably so many people around the world, especially in the United Kingdom, that a part of our lives that was taken for granted as being permanent is no longer there. And in that sense, there is an enormous shift in the world around us. And then a salvo of ceremonial artillery fire. The first of many that echoed from gun crews in all four home nations. One round for each year of the Queen's life. It feels just like, I don't know, you've lost your grandma. She's been there since, well, since I've been alive, she's done her role and she's just a beautiful lady. And it is the personal memories. Here, from her neighbours at Holyrood House, the royal residence in Edinburgh, that count for so much. As a ch child and a young woman, I'm very... I think I probably wanted to dress up. If she had something on that was nice, I would want to wear it too. <laughs> 
but amid the grief a new age has begun. At St James's Palace, preparations for the official ceremony to proclaim King Charles III are underway. He flew back to London to address his nation and his realms beyond these shores. John Ray, ITV News.